If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up everyone, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick, and I have a collection update for you. Been a interesting month here in terms of just August's offerings. Gotta celebrate my mom's birthday, which is always really cool, and another good friend of mine's birthday. Those are always nice. But then we get the death of Riley Gale, which I'm still in shock over. You know, my heart goes out, bandmates, family, friends. I never got to meet him or see Power Trip with him, and it sucks. He seemed like he was a really awesome dude. I, I love the fact that he went after that dude from Trap. That was absolutely hilarious. And he just seemed like a super cool dude. And then to add on top of that, we got the death of Black Panther, which fucking sucks too. I didn't even know he was sick. I mean, I was really kind of taken back by that too. But yeah, sorry for the depressing opening, but yeah, it's just been kind of a lot of processing there. Like, like two really young guys that seemed like they were up and coming, gone. It sucks, life's short, you know, make the most out of it. But I did manage to find some cool gems and this is a little bit different in terms of collection updates because I got a little classic rock in here because I just needed to sort of round out my collection of classic rock stuff. But of course there is a ton of metal in here because I love metal. You guys probably already know that. So I'm just gonna start in on this. ZZ Top, this is an original album series, little uh, disc set. We got Rio Ran Mud, Trace Ombres, Fandango, Deguelo, and Eliminator. I have such a connection with these albums because I grew up with them. My mom listened to a lot of ZZ Top, especially Eliminator. I absolutely love that album. It's just pure 80s fun. And I mean, honestly, it's their most recognized album. But the old stuff is absolutely great too, especially Fandango. I love the live sets that were on there or just the little live stuff they threw on that album. Plus had Tush. I mean, ZZ Top's great. I really don't need to talk much about this unless you've never heard of ZZ Top, and I I don't get that, but yeah, listen to ZZ Top. ZZ Top's awesome. And watch their documentary, too. The documentary on Netflix is fantastic. Check this out, though. Blues Pills, Holy Moly. This is their newest album. I believe this is their third album. I'm only missing one. I have their first one. This is a female-fronted sort of retro rock band. They're very similar to like Graveyard, Rival Sons, in terms of like that straight up like 70s rock sound. And my God, their for a woman can sing. She has an incredible voice. It's very soulful. It's kind of raspy and rough, but my God, she can really sing. Like her range is fantastic on here. Plus you get all those classic 70s rock riffs, high energy, but very soulful. Like and she's channeling Janis Joplin on this, I'm reasonably sure. Killer album. I love just the retro rock feel, and again, the vocal performance is what really stands out here. Now, they lost one of their longtime members. Uh, he left the band recently, so this is the first with a new guitarist, and he seems like he fills his shoes pretty well. Love the music on here, too, but I think it's the vocal performance that really stands out, which she was great on their first release, which I own. I don't have the other one again, but wow, just killer stuff. Definitely check this out. Cytotoxin, Nuclear. This is their new release on Unique Leader, and I have to say this is an interesting sort of transition for them that's still very much brutal death metal. I thought these guys were from Russia for the longest time just because of the whole Chernobyl theme. They're actually German. But this is a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more melodic, but it still retains a lot of their token brutality. It's not as nuts as their previous two because they would get really crazy with like the vocal cadences and insane you know rhythms and such. And I think they dialed back a bit of the sort of slammy snare on this. It's still a little bit there, but it's not as prominent. And most of this is really driven by guitars. And there's some legit, really solid hooks on this. I was actually kind of surprised. Like, I thought I knew what it was going to get just because their previous two albums I thought were a little bit more similar. This is a little bit different. And I like the changes they made. This is a really solid album. So definitely check this out. Faceless Burial, Speciation. This is the newest offering from this Australian sludgy, gritty death metal band. I really like this release in particular. I think this is so far their best one. And I keep seeing steady improvement from release to release, which is a really good thing. Now this came out on Dark Descent and it's just very much like 
incantation meets like death. There are a lot of really cool like lead harmonies and melodies on here and this is still all about like a dense murky atmosphere and I like the balance of like just groove laden play and technical play on here like they really do that well and they went for longer songs in here but they really don't get dull like there's a couple of spots they were like eh, maybe this runs on a little bit too long but generally the next moment that comes up is exceptional I really really dug this one this is a solid release and again the thing that I really like about this is from album to album I hear improvement in terms of songwriting and even production and such like it's keeps getting better. So I'd say this is a band that continuously keeps piquing my interest and I'm definitely, you know, more than willing to check out more releases from because this was banging. Check it out. Hellbastard, Heading for Internal Darkness. Now this is a re-release on Self Made God of this band's 1988 debut and this is a blend of crossover thrash and crust punk. And I would say it's more on the crossover thrash side, like it's a little bit more riffy. It's not just about like those simple punk chords. I mean, granted, you get them on here, but mostly it's about like thrash riffs and such. And it's really interesting because it kind of reminds me a lot of the early grind stuff, like early Napalm Death and early Bull Thrower. It really has that feel. Now, the production on here is not great. Uh, I'll be honest, it's, it's really just kind of murky, but I guess that kind of fits with the more punk side of things. And there are weird female spoken word parts on here, which uh, I don't know how they fit in there, but I don't know, they kind of just seemed a little jarring to me. But overall, this was an interesting listen, and we got some cool live covers or studio covers of Slayer songs and Hellhammer and Celtic Frost, and I love all that stuff too. Interesting release. I definitely want to check out more by these guys for sure. So yeah, if you haven't heard of these guys, definitely check them out. All right, we got a couple from Blue Oyster Cult. And I absolutely love Blue Oyster Cult. I've been trying to like round out the collection in terms of what I have by them. So we have Spectres and we have their live album On Your Feet or On Your Knees. Now I generally don't buy live albums, but I love the stuff that's on here. And I mean, it has Hot Rails of Hell, Harvest Survives, Cities on Playing with Rock and Roll. Absolutely love that stuff. This is of course the one with Godzilla on it. I'm a giant Godzilla freak. And of course I love that song because who doesn't love that song? It's just fun. But this is definitely like a little bit of a change for them in terms of their sound. Like they were kind of heading towards this on Agents of Fortune, which preceded this, which we know that's the one with Don't Fear the Reaper on it. Fun songs, just kind of like creative and wild sounding. Not as heavy as the earlier stuff. Like I really love their self-titled debut. I think that's an amazing album, but creative. And that's one thing that uh, Blue Oyster always was. They were just kind of this odd band that was kind of hard to pigeonhole. But yeah, love Blue Oyster Cult. Fantastic band, and you'll probably see a little bit more of them in my collection updates if I can find the albums I'm missing. So yeah, definitely check out Blue Oyster Cult if you've ever heard of them, because it's more than just those big singles. They're awesome. All right, we got some from Cream, Disarelli Gears, and Wheels on Fire. These are another two that have been pretty much ingrained in my psyche since I was a kid, because my mom played the hell out of Cream, mostly Wheels of Fire but I love Disarelli Gears too. And it's just awesome blues rock, fuzzy, trippy, like this is late 60s stuff. This is pretty much where I think rock and roll got a lot more experimental heading into the 70s. And these are pretty much Stone Cold classics in my mind. White Room, Killer Jam, and of course we have Sunshine of Your Love. Everyone knows that, but the rest of these albums are really good. They're kind of just trippy blues jams and I, I dig that. Definitely check out Cream if you've never heard them. I mean, chances are you probably have. That's why I'm not going into them in great detail because most people know what these are. But yeah, definitely check them out. Stone Cold Classics, love that shit. Speaking of Stone Cold Classics, Pink Floyd, Animals. I did not own this one and I'm kind of ashamed of that because this is their proggy, trippy masterpiece. Every track on here, even the little intro and outro tracks, Pigs on the Wing, they're awesome. Every track on here is a long adventure, like every song over 10 minutes, and they are just immersive, layered, incredible writing. I absolutely love this album. It's definitely up there with my favorites from Pink Floyd. Not really gonna go much into depth on this one because it's Pink Floyd, everyone knows who Pink Floyd is, or at least everyone should know who Pink Floyd is, but yeah, amazing album. Glad I finally own a physical copy. 
All right, back to the metal solicitor. This is their self-titled EP, and this is the one I just recently reviewed for Screaming Toilet, and I absolutely loved it. It is a pure throwback to 80s speed metal, heavy metal, with touches of thrash. Pretty much the same thing on here, except this is just a short EP. I think it's only five tracks. Again, the thing that I love about this band is, while it is traditional heavy metal at its core, the elements of thrash, and like speed metal and occasionally like you know some blackened touches in there make this really like come off heavier and i really like that feel and the female vocalist is absolutely exceptional in here again she reminds me a lot of like paul diano like she has that raspy delivery and she hits some really cool high notes love this really solid stuff definitely check out this band check out their full length too because that was an absolute banger yeah just just check them out bear mace charred field of slaughter this is their new album i believe it's their second album and this is a chicago-based death metal act it actually features a member from black sites which is a really cool like heavy metal doom metal band from chicago as well and this is just flat out old school death metal like this is like somewhere between obituary death and bloodbath the vocals on here are very much like Bloodbath style, like Ockerfeld vocals. They're enunciated very well, but they're very gurgly and they sound extra evil. And I love the riffs on here. Like it just screams like late 80s, early 90s death metal. It's all about groove and pummeling riffs. The lead work on here is really solid. And they threw in an awesome cancer cover, Into the Acid, which that's from their debut album. I absolutely love that album. And they did a solid job on it. So awesome. Across the board, killer album, straightforward, meat potatoes. If you love that sort of thing, definitely check this band out. I enjoyed this thoroughly. I'd like to get a copy of their first album too, if I can find it. But it sold out on Bandcamp, unfortunately, at least on CD. But yeah, definitely check this band out. This was a solid slab of death metal. 100 Demons, 100 Demons, self-titled album. Now this is their second album that came out on Death Wish Records and I picked this up just because I remembered hearing about this band and this was kind of cheap too. I want to say it was like two bucks. So I was like, eh, why not? And pretty much fits in with everything I was listening to when, you know, Metalcore was huge. A lot of hate breed, sworn enemy. Like it was definitely the more raw stuff. Like you didn't have the giant soaring vocals like you'd hear on a Kill Switch and Gage album, that's for sure. Because the clean vocals in here weren't very good. They attempted them, but. Unfortunately, like, this just feels really dated, like, there's a lot of recycled At The Gates riffs, which they don't necessarily fit on here because most of this is just, like, kind of, like, beat-down metalcore, like, you know, like, Earth Crisis sort of stuff, and it's just not particularly interesting, like, nothing on here really stood out. Cover school, I'll give them that, but, yeah, I don't even know if this band's around anymore, but this was just kind of there, but, like I said, it was only two bucks, so I figured why not. But yeah, still check it out, form your own opinion on it. You know, that's just what I thought of it, and I'm not the biggest Metalcore fan anymore. There's some out there that I like, but not so much. But yeah, still, you might like it. Chaotian, Festering Excarnation. This is a death metal band from Denmark. Definitely a lot of, like, Death Doom influence on here, too. Very raw demos. In fact, I think the one that came out in 2018 is actually better than the one that came out in 2019. Which the two demos are Where God's Excarnate and Festering Carrionolith? Sure. Um, the second demo, the one I don't want to say that word again, that's difficult. But yeah, that one is way more raw, like way more gritty. And it's really kind of hard to make out some of the instrumentation on it because it is really, really muddy. But I like the overall style. It's pretty much that kind of cavernous death metal that I love, like lots of incantation vibes. But I have to say I like the first demo a little bit better just because I think the mix is a little bit better. It's a little bit more clear. Granted, it's still murky as hell. These are demos and they sound fiercely underground. But I would definitely check out a like master release by these guys because I think what they write is really good. It's just straight up gritty, cavernous death metal, and I love that sort of thing. So yeah, definitely check this band out. I'm looking forward to actually hearing like a proper full length or an EP from these guys. The Atomic Bitch Wax, Scorpio. This is their new album that came out on TP Records, and if you've jammed Atomic Bitch Wax, you definitely know what these guys are about. It is heavy, like 70s rock, and for rock, it really does kind of border on metal. It, it is very heavy. The guitar tone is heavy, the bass tone is heavy, the production's just big. 
and I love just the flat out riff rock stuff on here like that's pretty much what they do it's just big catchy songs and there are a lot of them on here in fact there's some really cool instrumentals on here too that I really got into now this band features current and former members of Monster Magnet so again very similar to Monster Magnet as well but I don't know there's just something a little bit more energetic and almost kind of punky about these guys that I really get into Definitely check out Atomic Bitchwax. Check out any of their releases. Honestly, I don't think they really have a bad one. It's a little samey, but they're all fun. And that's something that kind of matters, I think. Definitely check it out, though. A lot of fun. Hiniana, Death of the Cosmic EP. This is my first exposure to this band, and I think they have like an entire full length before this, or maybe two. This is very like Paradise Lost-ish, amorphous, sort of like melodic death metal meets death doom, and it is fiercely layered with guitars, synths, even strings on here. Really solid writing, like it's very depressive, moody, like I, I, in terms of the writing I would say it's very close to Paradise Lost, like it really kind of has that gothic quality to it. Now vocally, I kind of wanted a little bit more dynamic, like this guy has a solid roar that it carries throughout this entire album, but like some somber cleans would be nice, or at least maybe like a different register in terms of the growl, because it kind of gets a little flat, but musically this is fantastic. This is really just depressive and gloomy and pretty much everything you'd look for in doom metal, but it has those melodic hooks that were just all over the place. I absolutely loved every song on here. But yeah, definitely check this out. This is on Napalm Records, and it rips. This is a solid EP. Check it out. And finally we have Venom, Sons of Satan, rare and unreleased stuff. And this is pretty much just a collection of like B-sides, live performances, studio jams, demos of Venom in their earlier years. I gotta say the stuff in the 70s I didn't care for just because the production is so awful. Like it sounded like it was recorded like on a tape deck, but the tape deck was wrapped in like wet towels and then covered in like gravy, like nothing was getting through, everything was muddier in hell. But when you get to the 80s stuff, the demos are really good. I, I really enjoyed them. I loved hearing the demo version of In League with Satan, like it just sounded really crisp. Actually, some of it sounded better than the actually mastered stuff. But, you know, granted this is remastered as well, so yeah, it's a little bit more polished. But yeah, this was fun. It's just a fun little, you know, throwback and hearing some of their earlier stuff before it was all polished or as polished as Venom ever got. And yeah, good stuff. Definitely check it out. It was fun. All right, well that knocks out another one of these. Um, sorry for the delay on Black Sabbath. We're gonna get together this coming weekend and knock that out finally. We just had a lot of other stuff that came up. But yeah, we're gonna keep rolling on, have some new segments that will come up eventually too. So yeah, stay tuned for all of that. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. Catch you guys later.